It's no secret that guys like to exaggerate what they've got going on down in the crotchal region. We've all heard it before, size doesn't matter, it's all about the motion in the ocean, but we've all also seen that initial gasp. The reaction of girl Meyer in a member that looks like a baby's arm holding an apple. But merely packing heat in and of itself is a little bit pedestrian. You've seen one giant schmeckle, you've seen them all. If you really want to be impressive, you gotta turn it up a notch. Enter the Redditor with not one, but two Johnsons. Because what's more impressive than being able to give a girl a hands-free shocker, am I right? It seemed far-fetched, yet there was photographic evidence. A lot of it. Obviously, I can't show you said photographic evidence, although, you know, there is that one jelking video that's on YouTube. I'm not gonna show you that either, but you can look it up and be like, hey, how is this on YouTube? But I can at least talk to you about it, and that's why today's episode of Tales from the Internet is the story of Double Dick Dude. Today's video, which will almost certainly be demonetized, is brought to you by Honey. When I shop online, I don't want to feel like I'm wasting money, and that's where Honey comes in. Honey helps give me peace of mind by scanning the internet for the best coupon codes that are available and immediately applying them at checkout. It works on over 20,000 websites like eBay, AliExpress, Sephora, Newegg, and more. And it takes zero effort to install. Just go to joinhoney.com slash wang, and in two clicks, you're ready to save money online whenever you shop. I've personally saved a lot of money over the years when shopping for pre-workout supplements and things like that. That stuff can add up to a lot of money, and it's always a relief to see Honey bring the price down. So there's really no reason not to start using Honey today. It's free to use and easy to install in just two clicks. Just go to joinhoney.com slash wang. That's joinhoney.com slash wang. And once again, thank you, Honey, for sponsoring this video, because I'm definitely going to need it for this one. All good, mate. Rich and complete meat protein. On December 31st of 2013, New Year's Eve, a Redditor named Warm Apple Juice would hit the front page of Reddit with his r slash WTF post entitled, Man with Two Penises. He had found the image on a place called Hot Meat Market, which was a Tumblr blog dedicated to extreme fringe gay porn. Obviously, Reddit very quickly had a lot to say about seeing a man with two dicks. I really wonder what the doctor's reaction was pulling him out of his mother. It's a boy. Oh wait, no, it's a god. Johnson & Johnson should make him their spokesman. After reading about the horrible gender reassignment stuff that used to happen shortly after birth, he's pretty lucky that they left both. I would be so angry if my parents told me one day, Well kid, we weren't sure when to tell you this, um... You were born with a second, bigger penis, and we had it removed. Sorry kiddo. He should get one and only one circumcised, then go around asking, cut or uncut? That's what it looked like he had in the first photo. I figured he was just half Jewish. <laughs> After the post started to gain a ton of traction, Warm Apple Juice got in touch with the owner of the Double Dick. Update on the AMA. I contacted the guy about doing an AMA and he said this. 15. Reddit wants you to do an AMA. Ask me anything session. Would you? DD. Well, I read some of the comments on the link you sent me, so I'm already there. Just not real savvy on how Reddit works. Tell everyone thanks for the support and kindness. I'll take more pics for you and send them. He also got to question the man of two dicks about his situation. Here's more information about it. Yes, both his cocks can get hard, and the smaller one gets harder, but it takes longer. His dominant cock, that pisses a bigger stream and shoots a majority of cum when he orgasms, is the one that is the biggest and hardest. No, he does not have four balls, just two. Size, his dominant cock is roughly seven inches, give or take how turned on he is. His smaller cock, when at full size, is about six inches. Sensitivity. Both cocks are equally sensitive, but he thinks the nerve endings are more receptive in his dominant cock. He can jerk both off and says that he does on occasion. Usually he jerks his right cock and the softer, smaller one flops around while he does. Best sexual experience. A three-way with a chick and another dude. From what he tells me, the dude was straight, but when he saw Double D's cock, he ended up playing with them and sucking them with the girl. Holes. He's had them both in a girl's pussy and a girl's ass. He's had them both in a guy's ass. He had them both in a girl's ass and pussy at the same time. Ejaculation. When he shoots his load, the bulk of it comes out of his right cock, some dribbles out of his left cock, and he usually has to milk it out of his left cock afterwards. 
He said that once he pinched off his right cock while he came and the cum squirted harder out of his left cock. Surgeries. He has no desire to have one of them removed. He did have to have one minor surgery in his teens to help the split in his urethra form more completely. It had been ballooning inside from pressure, where his dicks separate and they put catheters in him and did some minor surgery to make the intersection Y heal properly. So again, he can pee out of both dicks. Public bathrooms. Yes, he takes both out when he pees. Rarely uses a public wall urinal if he can use a stall. He always gets stares if someone glances over. He is not single. He has a boyfriend and a girlfriend. They know he's sharing photos and think it's funny some of the reactions he's getting. So basically, hookup requests are not accepted. He has no plans to submit a video. A few thousand people have already shared and posted the pics he sent and he knows videos will just go even farther. Absolutely, positively, he will not submit a photo of his face. He does not want to be recognized on the street. The next day, on January 1st of 2014, Double Dick Dude would come to Reddit r slash AMA to field some more questions. He verified himself with a picture of his username on top of his two flaccid uncircumcised dicks. I am the guy with two penises, AMA. I'm the guy with two penises, the original post was here. FAQ. Both are 100% functional. What I was born with is called diphalia. I did not absorb a twin. It's not genetic or inherited. I am bisexual and in a committed relationship with a man and a woman, but have permission to stray only with James Franco, wherever he is. Although most of the responses were just Redditors being Reddity, there were a few questions that gave more insight into his situation. Medical professional here with some questions. Have you had urological studies done to see how your urethra drains into both penises and if you have any other duplication of internal organs, like your prostate? Did they offer any sort of explanation as to the embryological cause of it? Had one issue in my teens. The Y intersection where my urethra splits into two had some tension issues and was ballooning until the pressure was enough to force the urine up and out. So they did some minor surgery and used catheters to stretch and open up the Y some. No problem since. One prostate, but it's bigger than average and it produces more seminal fluid than most. So at least once a week, or so it has to be squeezed when I orgasm to release all the fluid. As for the how, I don't know all the details. They told my mom that it could have been a lot worse and that I was rarer than boys who were on record. My mom refused a lot of tests and studies. She didn't want me feeling like a freak growing up and told me I was special since I had two and everyone else had one. Winky face. Do you know if this was a genetic mutation or a developmental abnormality? Also, does having both penises stimulated at the same time feel better than a single one being stimulated? It's congenital and it's from some crazy shit going on during development in the womb. My mom had some difficulties leading up to me being born and they noticed something was up with the ultrasound but not clearly till it came out with two dicks. Stimulation of both at the same time feels good but better when they are being sucked or inside someone. Jerking them at the same time just feels like jerking. Too hard. I usually just jerk the right one. Have you ever considered a career in porn? Serious question. Yes, I did a few years ago, but decided against it. It's one thing to be unique, it's another thing to be a novelty. I'd only be popular for so long and then I'd just be another blip in the hiccup of the porn business. The pay is shit from what I've seen, and I don't need money, I'm comfortable now. Besides, I can't figure a value for my dignity. The only reason I let photos out is because I thought people might like to know at least one guy with two normal dicks exists. All the others are pretty scary looking and I feel for them. He also mentioned that he had a book for sale detailing his life with two penises, which I'll link in the description of my Amazon store if you're curious. During this week, the story of Double Dick Dude would spread well outside the confines of Reddit hitting mainstream publications like the Daily Mail and Huffington Post as well as being referenced on Conan. It's been confirmed, true story, there's a man with a rare medical condition that gave him two penises. <laughs> this is true, yeah, it's all in the news, yeah. And like many others, I thought that was where the story ended, another Reddit legend come and gone. But recently, I received an email letting me know that there's actually a lot more to this story, prompting me to look into it further. You see, long after the story ran its course, Double Dick Dude stuck around Reddit popping into threads commenting and people would be like, Oh, hey, aren't you the guy with two dicks? And he'd be like, yep, buy my book. This routine would go on for years, and over the course of these years, a growing faction of people would accuse him of being a hoax. So let's look into some of these claims. 
The condition he claims to have, diphalia, is in fact a real condition. It was first documented in 1609 by a Swiss doctor named Johann Jacob Wecker. The condition can also affect the anus, the scrotum, or the testicles themselves, as well as other organs such as the bladder or the kidneys. And in the approximately 400 years since Dr. Wecker's discovery, only about 100 cases of this have been documented. It's an exceptionally rare condition, but it does happen, and with so many people online, there's no reason to doubt that there's some of them out there on the internet. But there are other factors that people cited as raising doubt. Perhaps the biggest one being the increasing size of both penises. The original image that was posted in 2013 depicted what appeared to be two average, maybe even smallish penises but they got bigger and bigger until by 2016 he was just packing two full-sized monster energy cans. But he did have an explanation for this. You see, due to a pinch in his urethra, he was having difficulty urinating all of a sudden. The doctors decided that they could fix this by severing his suspensory ligament. Allow me to explain. You see, the amount of dick you think you've got, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You have so much more to offer the world, but you've got that pesky suspensory ligament keeping it all tucked up inside your abdomen. And many men opt to have that ligament cut as a cosmetic procedure. You snip that ligament and the whole fucking thing pops out like a snake in a can of peanut brittle. The amount you get varies from person to person, but on average you're expecting to get about a half an inch of extra usable schwantz. But I've seen some men claim as much as two inches gain. All that being considered, it's very unlikely that the procedure makes you go from being a smallish to average to all of a sudden you've got fucking Mr. Hand's horse dick popping out. Furthermore, and I am not a doctor, but I have seen people saying that there is no circumstance in which that would be the procedure you do to solve that particular urinary issue. Other seeds of doubt were planted by his often fantastical, descriptive, uh, Tucker Maxian stories of sexual feats. Wild acrobatic orgies, prolapsed anuses, or rosebuds as they're called, because you know a prolapsed anus kind of looks like a rosebud. His medical need to spend most of his day draining his massive oversized prostate. My prostate gets inflamed if I don't ejaculate enough. I'm probably the only guy with a legit reason to orgasm at least once every day or two days. My prostate gets stimulation for both cocks and creates a lot of seminal fluid. So when I come, it has to be squeezed every few days to get all the excess out. Otherwise, it feels bloated and painful. He would post increasingly descriptive stories of his sexual exploits, making it seem that perhaps, maybe, it was just that thousands of Redditors were merely there to help this man get off to his fantasies. The entire Reddit community coming out to stroke this man's cocks. We did it, Reddit. And of course, it would be possible for a lot of these doubts to be assuaged with just a short video clip, because I mean, anyone can Photoshop all kinds of shit and tell all kinds of stories, but it's significantly harder to fake a video clip. But he refused, and one particular exchange regarding this was highlighted by r slash drama. It always struck me as strange that he didn't even just have a three second video of the dicks in real time. The pictures don't necessarily look fake, but it would have put a lot of haters to rest, and it really wouldn't be any different since he already throws up tons of pictures. But for some reason, he's very anti-video, and that raises suspicions of legitimacy. There are people who will never believe, regardless of what I post. The point is, the moment I allow people to make demands and command me to produce content they want, it's no longer what I choose to do. It's what I let other people determine I should do. The bottom line, the existence of my cocks doesn't rely on other people believing in them. Someone called Neil deGrasse Tyson, I've got a case of quantum dicks here. Kind of spooky, actually. Uh... It's not that I don't believe. Hope I made that clear. It's just that extraordinary feats generally require equally extraordinary evidence. You're cool, no offense taken. My personal position is that I really don't care if people believe or not. As I'm not wearing pants right now, I can look down at them. They're real. No need to prove anything to those who still want to call shenanigans. And as a content creator, I completely understand the desire to not be treated like a performing monkey, but at the same time, the whole thing was just getting kinda sus. And he clearly did care that people were calling bullshit as demonstrated by his response to a Jezebel review of his book. 
The review, while also somewhat favorable to the book, was also very skeptical to a lot of the claims that were made in it. This prompted him to write a lengthy paragraph by paragraph response to the entire review on his blog. If I were to go over this entire blog post, this could easily become an hour long video, but I would like to focus on one particular issue. Of everything that was brought up in the review, he seemed to have the biggest problem with Jezebel doubting his claim that he pulled out a woman's cervix during sex. The reviewer begins by quoting a segment of his book. You really did fuck my womb, she gasped quietly as she felt around. I don't think that's possible. My fucking pussy is inside out and I can put two fingers in my cervix and you think you didn't fuck it? The good news is that Dee Dee is wrong at best and fabricating at worst. I consulted with women's health practitioner Alexis Paulson, APM WHNPBC, who told me that, first of all, a cervix would need to be dilated and well lit for one to see the back of it. She pointed out that this could exist, she had just never heard of something like it, and that in order to actually dilate the cervix, which a penis couldn't do, you'd need to use more than one instrument and it would be incredibly painful for the person whose cervix was being dilated. It wouldn't be a fun story. It would either be a very painful experience or a possible medical emergency. Hey reviewer, did your registered nurse confirm with you that a woman who's had a child or two actually is more common to have an OS that is wider slash larger than ones who haven't? I like how the reviewer loosely admits that the nurse he spoke with pointed out that it could exist, she simply hadn't heard of anything like it, but then rushes on to continue his crusade to convince his readers, again, that I'm making it all up. To visualize the cervix, you need to open the vagina with a speculum and you need direct light. To penetrate a cervix with anything wider than a stick of uncooked spaghetti, you would have to dilate it with even more instruments, which would be very painful. You would need an additional instrument, tenaculum, to straighten out the uterus to avoid perforation of the uterus. Inserting anything non-sterile into a cervix could easily cause severe infection. The cervix is mostly closed and coated with a thick layer of mucus to keep anything out that's not supposed to go in. Based upon the quotes in the reviewer's blog slash post, it's clear that this nurse was contacted via email or at least she responded via email. Or worse yet, he quoted her as she spoke. What isn't clear is exactly how much information the reviewer gave the nurse to get the reply he uses in his review. I doubt he mentions in the nurse, I looked her up, she is real, that the cervix belonging to a girl in question was only visible after sex. Based upon the nurse's reply, it's clear she was given as little information as possible to provide a quotable comment that would complement his opinion. Here's a diagram of what would need to be done just to straighten out the uterus. Then he adds this to further support his opinion of the situation. It's a legitimate medical diagram, sure. But what many women will tell you, especially ones who've had a lot of extreme penetration during sex, is that you need no tools to push a cervix out of the vagina. If it's loose enough inside, it can pop out. You don't even need to ask me, just look up porn on Google. Plenty of women spread their pussies open and pop out their cervix. It's not that unusual anymore. As I said before, I'm not a doctor so I don't know, but I'm sure there's doctors in the crowd who would love to share their opinion on this matter. Adding more doubt is the claim that popped up in the original thread that I have not been able to verify. If it was there, it might just be gone from the internet now. But there was a claim that the original image could actually be traced back to a French website that had nothing to do with Double Dick Dude. But ultimately, the jury is out as to whether or not this is a legitimate story. And ultimately, we wind up with three different schools of thought in the story. You have those who think that everything he said is true, those who think that he really did have two dicks, but a lot of his story is embellished, and a third faction that thinks he's just completely full of shit. I'll put a poll up to see what you think. As for the man himself, it seems that he is still around, and he's currently working on a comic book detailing his adventures. But anyway, as of now, that's the story of Double Dick Dude. If you like this story, you'll probably also like my video about two girls, one cup. Peace out.